Outside Talk TV. Today we've got Robin from Mediaplex. Robin, thanks for coming in. Well, thank you for having me on. Uh, today we're going to talk about the concept of the DMP, uh, what it looks like in a minute against uh, what it could look like in the future. But before we do that, we're going to get Robin to introduce himself and Mediaplex and talk about the company. Um, yeah, so first of all, thank you for having me on. It's a real pleasure. Um, my name's Robin Davis. I work for Mediaplex. Uh, we're a global marketing analytics company. Uh, we help um, brands and agencies, but with a focus on brands. Uh, we help them make more money from their digital marketing spend, uh, essentially by making it easy for them to do best practice, uh, doing things their way. Okay, thanks Robin. So let's talk about the DMP. Let's talk about how it looks in a minute uh, and it's in its limited form against maybe what it could look like in the future in terms of bringing offline online etc yeah so i suppose the uh the dmp in terms of how it's actually been used today it has evolved uh from the need to activate um customer data whether yeah. that's browse data on site or media interaction data from media spend yeah so um if we were to map out a marketing funnel of sorts um we'd have this the site interactions here with money making events down there um and we would have the some sort of funnel with a, a consideration phase for people who are in market and then upper funnel users who've not ever visited the site before so you know the way in which most dmps have evolved to date has been making the most of uh, on-site browse data having access to the full granularity of the data to buy audience better and to serve the right creative when you create that opportunity yeah and it's obviously what it could be is limited at the minute. So let's talk about how a DMP sh could, could and should look in the future. And particularly around, you know, from brands bringing all that offline data into sort of the online space. Yeah, so um, at the moment, um, most of the, you've got to remember, of course, that the way to activate the data in any data management platform can only be done by a media delivery or optimization yeah. tool. So either the data sits in those tools or those tools talk very neatly to the data management platform to access them. At the moment, the way in which browse data and intent data is being passed into these tools is typically through pixel exposure. And I think that's primarily because there are like 300 of these companies. So all that PC money um, being pumped into various point solutions has mean that you've got this really fragmented uh, technology yeah. environment. And so pixel exposure, you know, you go on any web page with a, a pixel tracer, it's insane, like 30, 40 pixels of firing. Now, ideally, you would like to have all of this data in a single data management platform that a brand can use in its own stack of point solutions or its own choice of point solutions to execute on that data and get good return for the media spend. So um, you've got all your, your sort of paid media and you've got your earned media. So that's uh, SEO, um, earned social media, direct to site type traffic. You've got all your email service provider data, your affiliate, social, mobile, web, and app. And of course, display, both biddable display and uh, negotiated display. So um, most of our advertisers um, will be across all of these channels and they'll be using Mediaplex as a data management platform to capture all of the impressions, clicks, browse data and conversions to measure return on ad spend and better allocate budget. So for our brands, all of this data is captured inside uh, the marketing analytics database, which feeds into the marketing stack that delivers it. Um, the same if you're using a, a collection of solutions um, through an agency of relationship. Um, that agency will have relationships with uh, or, and access to technology uh, to do a similar thing. Now, what's, uh, where we need to go with this, I suppose, is yeah. to try and bring in more first party data that the brand has that you don't have from the online environment. Mm -hmm. So after a user's come through and bought something, what happens then? You know, We wanna get the, the life value data. You wanna get the net net value. So Imagine a financial lead, it's mm. just a lead. You need to know whether that turned into, into value or not. So after the event, brands have got, well, they've got lots of databases actually. 
Typically they'll have CRM data um, from their email service provider. They'll have a, a My Account login, um, which will have their customer data and mm -hmm. financial data, and probably a call center data as well. Mm -hmm. I think the challenge for most of our brands is, first of all, how do we bring those together into a single client-side or brand-side data management platform to use everything they have uh, in terms of their first-party data? Mm -hmm and joining into that all of the data from their media activation tools, from media delivery. Yeah, I mean, in terms of sort of like, I mean, this seems like a, a core, potentially is a core part of the, the advertiser's business in terms of like, you know, data is the, is, the, is the DNA of any good brand or publisher. So should this piece of technology kind of sit with the agency or sit with a third party or would you have it sitting with the, on the brand itself using sort of a, you know, and yeah. third-party technology or bespoke technology themselves? That's a good question. And I think um, well, all of the brands we work with are asking exactly this question. And it's a, it's a tricky one because it depends on, on the brand, yeah. where, how big its digital spend is, um, how invested the organization is mm -hmm. in digital. Um, and actually, many brands are in transition from one of those to another. Yeah. So, you know, if I could just... I don't know, one... You might have sort of half a head a guy who's doing offline and online marketing. Yeah. Um, you might have a, a company that's got a team of two who's outsourcing all the decision making to an agency and they just want to get home on time. Mm -hmm. you know? And then you've got brands you know, with channel managers where you know, this guy here might be social, affiliate, search, display, and they're, they're experts in each digital channel. And these companies are highly invested. They're spending a lot of money, always on, very direct response. Um, those are the kind of brands that MediaPlex does its best work for. Okay. And they're the ones who've got the most vested interest in having the first party data brought together with the digital marketing activation data um, to get the most return from their spend. And actually it goes beyond direct response advertising. It's also about customer relationship management and branding. So all of this data can also be used for, for you know, using display. I mean, RTB is not just about driving sales. In fact, when was a banner about driving a click? Yeah. You know, so well, the debate still still rages. <laughs> yeah. But used correctly um, and with all of the data in one place, um, brands can have really sophisticated contact strategies, mm. both for prospects coming in and then when they become a customer for the rest of the life cycle of that relationship. But are, are brands ready to make this this big jump that we're talking about here? I mean, this is a significant sort of change yeah. in, in the way and, and, and sort of process they have at the minute. These guys know, these guys probably not. Uh, these guys are probably better off using whatever their agency recommends because yeah. the agency will have their own uh, aggregation of data, their own way in which to link that data management data with DSPs they have relationships with, they'll have cookie syncs with, uh, you know, with third-party data providers. So asking them to ask their agency to do anything different than the one approach that that agency has will be tricky for the agency. Mm -hmm. So they should work that way. These guys have got a longer-term potential. Mm -hmm. So yes, all the larger brands we work with are bringing together their various first-party data assets into a single real-time database solutions. Mm -hmm. It takes time, it takes money, and skills and resources they, they don't immediately have. Um, but yeah, real-time database, RTD. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and they're looking for ways to bring, to integrate the marketing stacks they work with to bring that data into here so that they can control their first-party data, ensure there's high quality of data, and that the tools they use for activating it have very fast access to it. Because, you know, from, you know, other than the first party data, if you're looking at using any other intent data, everyone else has got access to it. Yeah. So how are you going to kind of control. control and get better performance over that unless it's like fast? And, and you know, you're, you're competing in a, you know, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot if you're the largest player in any vertical and you're sharing your first party data. Absolutely. And on that note, uh, Robin, thanks very much. And that is uh, the DMP utopia world that we hope to, will come to pass at some stage. So thank you, Robin. Thank you. And that was Trade Talk TV. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Robin.